we've got our pieces cleaned, we've done our measurements, it's now time to do our sweat solder of these components. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some flux. The flux that we want to use is going to be for lead free. So our solder is a lead free solder. So I want just a very fine thin film of flux and I like to do the inside wall here. So it's just a light coating. It doesn't have to be very much and the same is true with here. Just a light coating of flux and that flux is going to help assist that solder wick its way through between the, the valve and the actual copper tube. And then I'm going to do the same for up top. So I'm going to make sure that this valve body and this connection that we're going to fit is properly done. Here's what we've got. There's my system. I'm going to take this and I've got this. Notice as I was doing this, there's a little piece of sticker that this product came from. If at all possible, get rid of that. And the reason will become clear when we start sweat soldering. We'll see that flux start to drip out and as it gets hotter and hotter it'll actually cause that glue and that sticker to start to melt and make a big mess. So now I think I've got everything that I want to do. I want to sweat solder this way. I want to show you how to do a bottom solder and then a up flow solder. We're fortunate in this particular location that the heavier piece is going to be on the bottom and will, gravity will naturally feed that sweat solder down. What I do is when I grab my solder I give it a little bit of an elbow, a little bit of a bend right there and I'll show you why in just a second. So I'm going to remove some of the stuff from the tabletop and then we're going to get ready to solder. What I've got now is the safety glasses. I'll have those on. I'll have my wet rag ready to go and then I'll have a pair of pliers which is off to the side which we're not going to use just yet but I've got them off to the side here. We've got all of our tools and we're ready to go. I like to have one part of the rag if at all possible really damp and one part over here slightly a little bit drier. And I'll show you why I like to do it that way in just a moment. The first thing that I'm going to do is put on my leather gloves because you never know when you're going to have to move something around and you didn't account for something to move when it gets hot. There are a few brands of torches that are out there. So for example, here's a power propylene. Let's see if there's a difference. There should be a difference between this yellow type and I'm, not drawing, I'm just drawing a blank on the type of fuel they're using and then over down on the bottom we've got just your regular propane type of torch. The thing is the propane is not nearly as hot as with this uh, propylene type, but I don't even think it's propylene. It says it on here, but I I'm not quite sure what they, they mixed. The only difference is the propane just doesn't get quite as hot as fast. I don't really have any issues. With three quarter inch pipe, it goes quick. Half inch, you'll never know any difference. If you're gonna sweat solder a four or five inch and all day long pipes, yeah you might want to go with the yellow bottle, but it's just purely personal preference. Now I'm going to fire this up, and I want you to, if you can see it, I'm going to put my hand behind it, and it's going to do some good. There's a cone that comes out, and the point, which is going to be very difficult to see in this bright light, ends right there. And then there's an inner cone right there. What I want to do is now I want to place this at where the end of that flame is, so I want to be back a little bit, and then what I want to do is rotate around 360 degrees. Now sometimes you might be lucky to be able to reach all 360 degrees. If you're not, what you want to do is attempt to get this as sufficiently hot around all the sides as you possibly can. Now if we did this video, and an install rather, and I want to try to do it, I'm going to try to do it around the back end first. And the reason is, I want to sweat solder. You see how that solder just whipped up and around right there? So what I want to do is just gently touch. And with that sweat solder just to flow around the edge. Now, I know it's embarrassing to say, but I'm from the, the old school of over soldering. I, I tend to put too much solder in. So I started in the back, I worked my way around 360 degrees, and now what I'm going to do is take the wetter side of my cloth, and I'm going to gently wick that off. And I'm just going to remove that. I'm going to get a nice solder joint. I'm going to just let that solder flow out, and I'm just going to pull that around, and then I'm going to cool the rest of it off. I've got it all 360 degrees. You can see that it's made it all the way around. And 
then there's that sweat solder. And then what I'll do is I'll take the dryer end later and I'll just cool everything down. If I was doing this in a full install without a video camera, I would have immediately done the top one as well and then rubbed everything down. But I just wanted to get this first joint down to show you. And then I'll pick that piece off. So I used a little bit of excess solder, but you can see how it's clean and it formed around that lip and the edge. So that's really what I'm shooting for. I want to be on, I want to get it hot, hot enough for the solder to flow around and flow into the seal. And then if I look inside of here, if I'm lucky, I can see just a touch of solder. And, it, and I don't know if the video will even show it, but I see just one single little spread out of solder where the lip of the gate valve and that copper come together. And that tells me I know that solder wicked all the way through that copper in between the gate and the copper pipe down to the bottom. And I'm pretty happy with that solder joint. Now, uh, there's no way at this point to tell whether it's a sealed joint, but at least I think this is a solid joint. I feel pretty comfortable with that. Now, let's do this top valve. Let's show you how to do a vertical sweat solder. Again, I'm going to grab this. Now, the problem with sweat soldering is you don't want to be on too long. The objective is to get in and get out. The longer I'm on there, the more risk I run of doing more damage to the pipe than good. So, I'm going to try to work my way around all 360 degrees. And since the solder is going to come up into the elbow, I really want to start heating the elbow. I don't want to heat, I want to heat both pieces, but the, object, the objective is for us to hit this bottom piece and have that solder flow up. So, I'm going to go around, and then what I want to do is just gently do that. And it gives me a little test to see if it's hot enough. It's hot enough now, I'm going to work my way around 360 degrees, and it's hard to see maybe in the video, but you will watch that sweat, that solder flow out, and then it looks kind of wick inside, and you can kind of see it bubbling right there. There we go, and I'll get her around, I'll wrap around in the back, and that should do it. And if I can move it, then maybe I will. But if I can't, I'm just doing it for that. Now, it looks ugly, because it is. We'll take that wet rag, and we'll wipe around. And we'll just wipe off the excess corrosion there. Get this off. Clean her up. There. Nice. So it flowed up and around. It's a hard seal to to show you, but what I'll do now is I'll grab a little bit of this and I'll just clean her off. So it's still a little warm, but I just want to clean this off just to show you what, what we're looking at on the way of this solder chain. And it's hard to see, but you can kind of see where it's seeped its way in. It looks good. See that ring that's flowed around? And that's it. That's how you do an up solder.